This channel is supported by Truefire. Truefire is an online library of lessons from some of my favorite players. There's thousands of lessons on there. You can use the promo code JNC40 to get 40% off of any of their courses.
of us, except for Wayne, are, are never going to get to play a real Dumble. Actually, Jake, you've played one as well. Um, let me know in the comments if you've played a real Dumble, you, you lucky thing you. However, there's this kind of thing in the pedal world where the Dumble name has been used quite a lot to sell various pedals. I've tried a lot over the years um, as, you know, this is a sound that I really like. Um, for me, what the Dumble sound is, now this is different for, for lots of different people, is this kind of thick sustaining thing. Think about something like a tube screamer in front of a fender. That is initially what Howard Dumble, Alexander Howard Dumble, was basing his thing on the Dumble ODS. It was hearing Robin Ford playing through a uh, tube screamer and a fender bassman. Um, so I like to think of it as having some amount of kind of clean in there as well, but something maybe with kind of a thick sustaining tone, Robin Ford-esque. Um, for me, I tend to dial things in a little bit darker than probably you're used to or a lot of people, but anyway, that, that's just me. So the first pedal that I think deserves a shout out in this is the sound of essentially continuum. John Mayer used a blues breaker in front of a dumble and... Um, I think this actually does do something like the Dumble kind of clean mid gain thing. It gives you this really thick, compressed, um, chirpy kind of thing. I don't know if you agree, but that that for me is one of the, the key sounds that I kind of think of is that, that really nice, full, warm, clean tone. So Blues Breaker, I think, deserves a little bit of a mention. Obviously, it's not actually Dumble inspired, but then a lot of these pedals are kind of based on something else anyway like there's a lot of zen drive clones that have been rebranded as dumble-esque and that sort of thing and you know also some sort of tube screamer stuff anyway so blues breaker <laughs> type stuff I did a little bit of research on the dude the dude I think is relatively unique ish but someone online said that the schematic looks a lot like a Zen drive but then with another clipping stage after let me know your thoughts in the comments if you're uh, someone who understands this sort of stuff there is uh, a PCB layout for this available called the abider as in the dude abides the abider um, but yeah, what I like about this is that it's the smallest of all of these pedals um, and has a really useful treble knob which works with basically any amp that I've tried because you can sort of tame the high end. So say you were going into a Vox style amp and it was too spiky um, or you know into something with some Marshall-esque uh, kind of cabs that are quite bright, you can use that treble to really dial it back so that you've got a bit of that kind of darker thicker tone and also the deep kind of chucks up those those low mids and stuff like that so i think the dude for being smaller for being available and um for being not super expensive <laughs> Jetta, Brad Jetta has designed a bunch of pedals, but this is the Monster. Um, this is essentially two, I think, of the GS124s, which uh, I don't know too much about these really, although, you know, Jake, for instance, really liked them. 
Um, but yeah, essentially two dumbbells. That's what I quite like about this. It's a fairly small enclosure and you get then two gain stages. Um, this one, I think, has a bit more of the chirpy stuff going on um, and is more flexible in that you can kind of have two gain stages on or off and then independent. Uh, so that's what's quite cool about that. Uh, I need to look into a little bit more about what's going on with these. So the first clip you hear with this, I've just got the left side and then on the second, it's both together. Um, but I think Brad Jetta um, makes some pretty cool pedals. <laughs> to the dumbbell sound for me what I'd really want is someone that had had a dumbbell or two on their bench and was maybe an amp builder uh, and someone who really understood uh, you know some about what makes a dumbbell a dumbbell now one of these folks I believe is Peter Van Wielden and the Van Wielden Royal Overdrive I think is probably the most comprehensive take on a dumbbell um, style pedal that there is. Now he had to stop making these because it just was no longer cost effective. There's about 350 components within this, um, which I think is quite a lot for a pedal in general. Uh, what I really liked about this kind of plugging it in and listening and playing, it had a really great feel to it, which obviously is very difficult to, to kind of convey. But I think part of that feel was that it's kind of a full tone but also at the top, there's still this kind of chirpy, stringy stuff coming through. Um, a really, really great pedal, I think. Uh, so although expensive, although massive um, and hard to power, it takes 12 volts, 450 milliamps, so or 650, 9 volts. Not the easiest to power and not the easiest to fit on a board. The mid boost here doesn't give you loads more gain. Um, but is there if you want it. I think I have that engaged um, and you've got a gain boost at the top. You've also got these knobs where you can basically configure it essentially to be like a drive channel to add to your clean amp. Um, and it's got, you know, mode bright switches that you can sort of tailor for basically any amp. I think, I think Jake agrees on this as well, my buddy, that this is probably one of the coolest drive pedals. If you're into this sort of thing, if you're not into the dumbbell sound, then I think this would give you um, more kind of question marks than anything else, you know, like what are people into with this. I will say if there was one manufacturer that I would like to see have a take on this, it might be Origin Effects because with their Revival Drive stuff, they did some actually pretty unique things like sticking transformers into their pedals and this kind of talk of ghosting overdrives. I think I'd like to see Origin Effects try and take on this kind of Dumble thing if they were interested because I think that'd be really cool. But you know, someone like Two Rock or, as well, or Fuchs or um, any of the guys that were there kind of at the start of kind of demystifying the Dumble, I'd like to see those kind of guys or Blue De Tone, um, Van Wilden. I think Van Wilden builds amps and cabs still for some of the people that have real Dumbles like Joe Bonamassa. Um, so those kind of people I'd like to see because there's a, a whole bunch of 
folks. I think the Mad Professor symbol is very close to a Zen Drive circuit from what I've read. The Zen Drive circuit needs to be mentioned. I don't have a Zen Drive, but that again is like a, a bit of a tweaked tube screamer circuit from what I know that gets you a little bit closer to that Dumble sort of sound. A tube screamer in and of itself is kind of what started the Dumble sound, so that might be a good shout as well. Those are some of my favorite um, designs. I've tried the Ethos um, preamp, that's pretty good as well. Um, but these are the ones that I've still got that I thought mm, that might be interesting to, to one or two of you. So let me know your thoughts in the comments about your favorite Dumble sounds or are you over it altogether? Are you sick of it? It might not be a sound that works for you at all, but for me, I really like that kind of thick tone working with a Strat into a clean and it, it just feels and sounds, it to my ears, like a really smooth, great tone. Let me know your thoughts on that in the comments. I'll say that again because obviously I've not said it enough. Cheers for now.